Yeah. All right, Coach, um, I wanted to open it up a little differently. This weekend is a military appreciation week. Do you have uh, anybody in your family that's been in the military, or is there a special kinship to the military for you? I do. I have, uh, my dad was in the Army. Uh, my grandfather was in the Army. So I have a couple family members that were in the service. So I grew up uh, in a military style family. You know, I, I didn't have to, the normal childhood life. So I had a little more discipline than the, the average person. And then when I, uh, when I was coaching my son in high school, I was the director for the Semper Fi Dallas High School All-American Game. So I got a chance to, to work with the Marines a lot. And uh, I really appreciate a lot of the values that they uh, represent and embody every day. So I, 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 I do have a background with the military. And I, look at it, I look at it a little bit differently than the normal person. Very good. All right, guys, questions? Uh, I want to piggyback off that. Having the, the military background in your family, I mean, uh, this does uh, preach discipline a lot in life. So how does it help you as a football coach and helping the, our, all the offenses you coach be more disciplined with the football or just discipline in general? Well, I think that when you talk about discipline, anything that is good has discipline. You know, when you, you talk about a, a good player, a good coach, uh, a good CEO, I mean, they're all disciplined. They're all disciplined in what they do. They, there's certain structure that you have to, to follow. Uh, and certain small details that you have to make sure that you you carry out and you master. Uh, so I think it carries over from uh, just who you are as a person and part of your life to what you do in, in life. Going up against uh, Marshall, what stands out to you about their defense? Well, they're they're a good football team. I mean, they're they they have good athletes. Uh, they're they they play hard. Uh, they have a, a good scheme, uh, and it's going to be a, a good physical football game uh, and we have to prepare like that uh, so they have our respect uh, and we're gonna do our due diligence all week and make sure that we're prepared and ready to go on Saturday. Uh, third downs have been generally very good this season until last week. Um, were, you, were you in a lot of bad down and distance or was there a lack of execution that you'd like to correct this week? Well we, we were in more uh, long down and distances than we than we wanted to be but uh, we knew going into that game that they were uh, a very good defensive football team in, in third and long situations uh, just because of the type of style and defense that they played. So in that situation, we really did not push the ball down the field. You know, they were a team that had uh, cover zero blitzes that we, we made sure that we prepared accordingly. So uh, they were good. We were not as good as we wanted to be. But one thing we did not do is we did not get uh, hit by their their pressures or their cover zeros and uh, we didn't put ourselves in bad situations and take sacks so we allowed our, ourselves to punt uh, use use hay ball and, and you know, who's a weapon for us and uh, try to change field position so the one thing that we did not do was turn the ball over so uh, I think that was a big key in us winning that football game. So now uh, FAU is on a 12-game winning streak at home. Marshall is 7-1 all-time against FAU. One of those things has to give. Is there a lot of pressure going into this game against a particular opponent or just going into it the same mindset as before? Well, we're treating this as uh, we've got to go 1-0 this week. Uh, Marshall just happens to be uh, that team this week. And uh, things have not gone in the past, but a lot of us have not been here. So uh, we're preparing hard. Uh, expecting a good football game against a good football opponent. Uh, and uh, our motto is we don't lose at home. So we're gonna try to do our best to make sure we keep that keep that streak going. And how important is it to have an opponent like this at home rather than go out on the road, especially in a place that all these guys are comfortable playing in in front of the fans that all these guys love playing in front of? Well, we, we always appreciate uh, playing at home and uh, being here in our stadium. Uh, our guys feel a certain comfort level when we do that. Uh, I think they're going to be ready to go, but we're excited about the opportunity. And then uh, Marshall's passing offense has been, or passing defense, I'm sorry, has been really good. But uh, the bread and butter has been running the ball, and it seems like it's a place where you guys match up well against them. Is it going to be another one of those games where you're trying to run the ball down their throats? Well, we want to be physical. Uh, we feel that everything we do starts with the run, run game. Uh, and, you know, we want to try to get that going because it opens up everything else that we do. Uh, and if we're effective running the ball, then we're hard to deal with. So uh, each game, no matter whether, whether we're playing Marshall or any other opponent, uh, we're going to try to establish the run in some way.
Coach, what's the biggest thing you're looking for out of the offense against Marshall? Uh, just consistency, uh, detail, uh, and fundamentals, and execution. Uh, we just want to play a clean football game. We want to make sure that we're, we're, we're locked in, not making mental mistakes, uh, and give ourselves an opportunity to let our athletes play. Uh, and if we can do that, I think we'll have a good chance to win this game. I got my, my brothers in Minnesota. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Okay. I got some family relatives in Minnesota, some sisters. Some blood, not blood, but right. family members. So when you go into a game that's a military appreciation game, is there an added um, – thought process that goes into the game for you representing them? I, mean, I feel like I just, um, I pray for people that, you know, help, help them on the way for me, for me to come to a better place. Very good. All right. Um, you had a change in position on the sides of the ball, kind of putting the pieces together with the offensive line the last couple of weeks. That seems to have done um, good things for the offense. Can you talk a little bit about making that move and moving forward? Uh, the move basically it came from Coach T. Um, Move basically is saying that you know he wants me to play left tackle. He feels like I can play left tackle. Um, I talked to him about it, and I basically said, you know, what's best for the team? Whatever's best for the team to make us move forward, um, I do. It doesn't matter. It shows that I'm versatile. That either side I can play right and left. So I mean, I'm able to process the information as fast, and then get up to speed and continue to go and push forward. So any way to help the team, I'm good to do it. That's a lot of work, though. People think it's an easy shift, but you're using a different side of your body, or? I mean, you know, you got to do what's, like I said, you got to do what's best for the team, no matter what. No matter what, it's a team, the team, the team, always a team. So if it helps the team get better, and you know, no matter how hard or how difficult it is, I'll do it. Very good. Any questions? Yeah, Chaz, uh, the coaches have talked about they expect a physical football game from Marshall because. Marshall prides themselves on being that type of team. For an offensive lineman, what does that mean when you say it's going to be a physical game? Well, for an offensive lineman, I mean, strength. We got strength in the whistle no matter what. Um, we got to finish blocks, get people on the ground, um, blocking them as well, you know, real hard. I mean, finishing blocks, like straining, just going through the whistle no matter what. Blocking until we hit that whistle. Um, it's just going to be a physical game up front. Um, like I said, this is my first year. It's my first year here for a Marshall game. Um, this is a, this game worse than the FIU game I've heard. So it's, it's hate week. Marshall, every week is hate week for us, but this week it's personal. Um, when we win this game, you know, end up winning the conference, end up winning this conference championship. So we're going to take care of business this week. And it's going to be very physical up front. I mean, the, the phrase, you control your own destiny, is kind of a, a cliche at this point. but. Do you guys feel that, you know, with the number of games left you, you have on the schedule with four games left and you're tied for first place, that you can control what happens? I can't speak for the rest of the team, but I know the mindset that we have. I can say that, yeah, we're going to control our own destiny. I feel like if we come and play every game like we've been playing, we'll dominate the rest of the season. If there's anything you'd like to see the offense do better, would it be just be more consistent, put together, you know, a few more drives a game? I mean, yeah, I feel like we can we can put together more some more drives, um, you know. And I mean, honestly, what we do, the, the way we do everything is, I feel like is the best way. Um, but I mean, if the coaches got more plays for us to run. Run up and score more, I'm, I'm fine with that. More points, more scoring, it's, it's always great. One thing that Johnny Ford said he wanted to do more is thank the offensive line. Has he been doing that? <laughs> Johnny Ford has been thanking the offensive line. I mean, honestly, I feel like everybody here has been thanking the offensive line. Um, you know, it's, it's deep down there in the trenches. Playing offense, playing defense, line is deep in the trenches. Um, you know, with offensive line, you sometimes you always get the blame for things, or you, you know, when things go good, you get the praise for things. But playing offensive line, that's what you're gonna do, and that's something that I have to grasp. Playing this now, that you're gonna get you blamed for some things, you're gonna get praised for some things. But at the end of the day, it's about the work that's being done in the trenches. Because in order to win this game, you gotta go through the trenches to win this game. So, and then this next game can be another battle through the ten trenches, and uh, another big thing that has been uh, a priority for you guys has been running the ball. So. 
how is it preparing for that and trying to get the guys going again on the ground? I mean, preparing for this and running through the ground, I mean, honestly, it's just, I feel like it's just us coming in, learning, learning more stuff about the team that we're facing, learning more about the players, um, how they're going to spike inside, are they going to highly on the rest of the field, just learning, learning the ins and outs of every field. A lot of different ways, yeah. uh, just protecting our freedom and our liberties is is something I think we all should uh, you know, value and uh, certainly appreciate what they do to, to protect and and serve uh, such a great country. So, appreciative of them and what, and what they do. I, I don't have a great, you know, military background. Ours has all been in coaching, sure. Sure. <laughs> my family history. So. We took that that road, uh, but uh, you know that doesn't mean we we, sure. we all shouldn't appreciate everything they do. Uh, so unselfishly, you know, protect us all. Now, yeah, so talking about the game about UTEP, uh, it seemed like through the first three quarters, guys played great, and then always it was 15 points at the uh, fourth quarter. Can you just evaluate the defense? Yeah, you always dwell on the negative. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. So I, I don't. I'd rather talk about the first 56 minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we're disappointed in the way we finished. That that happens and it's over. We try to learn from it and move on. So uh, I would rather, like I said, talk about the first 56 minutes of the game. So what did you see in those first 56 minutes of the game that, that proved to be successful in those three quarters? Yeah, that was, you know, we were four for 17, got off the field. Those are all important statistics. Uh, you know, when you play a team like that, that team was six or one. It's a good football team. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, we played physical up front, controlled the run game, uh, gave up a couple, you know, balls down the field. That's going to happen. I think they have a, a really good quarterback and some good wide receivers. And, um, you know, I, I, I liked the way our kids competed. Uh, we knew it was going to be a tough game. Uh, you know, points were a premium. We set our offense up a couple different times in, in very positive field positions. One time, I think we intercepted and take it down to the, what, 12, 13, 14 yard line. So anytime you can do that and, and set your offense up and, and give them, you know, a lot of possessions, you're doing a lot of good things. And I thought our players for the for the most part really locked in and and uh, played well. I thought Smoke did a great job, uh, you know, coming in and, and really giving us a lift in the secondary. Um, Jordan, you know, had his hands. We had some, we, 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 we dropped, I think, a couple interceptions right in our hands as, as well. So we continue to, you know, you have to make plays in games like that. And I thought our guys, um, you know, really played well and, and made some big plays at key moments of the game. To, to, it enabled us to separate during the game and put us in that position at the end. So, so you do have one of the better safety groups in the country in uh, Jordan and uh, TJ. Uh, what is it like having those guys on the field and like how do you see them working off of each other and uh, <coughs> keeping those big plays from happening? Well, I, I, I appreciate them. I, you know, along with Corral and uh, Amon, I, those guys are, you know, these are very, uh, you know, guys savvy, played a lot of football. They understand the game very well. They understand what we're trying to do. They understand strengths and weaknesses in every call and, uh, you know, where they can help. So uh, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, coaching those guys. Uh, they're, they're, they want to learn. They're very, um, you know, they're, they're, they're very good football players. I, I think all of them play at, you know, an extremely high level and, um, you know, we're, we're blessed to have all of them. And I, I, I think they can continue to, to be better. And, and, and uh, you know, if you have that part of your defense, you know, the last, it, that's the last line of defense, uh, you can get good safety play. You can usually play, you know, pretty good defense. Tough deal with uh, Caleb's injury. How does that affect your, how much will you miss him and how does that affect your rotation? Well, I think it, it affects us in you know a lot of different ways, uh, emotionally, you know, leadership-wise. Caleb's, you know, like I said a week or two ago, that he was coming into his own. He's put a lot of time into this. He's you know had to adapt to a lot of different styles of defense, and you know, for him, I, I think he was starting to become you know more reactive and instinctive in his play, and it's it's shown on the field. So. You know that's disappointing for him and and certainly for us. But um, you know you just gotta, you know we, we 
I, I think Coach Thompson's done a great job of, you know, getting players ready to play. And Kiki and, um, you know, Eddie and, and, and Anthony. Uh, so, you know, all these guys are, are good. And we'll have to bring, you know, keep developing a, a, a player or two, uh, a younger player that hasn't, you know, had the reps, but we got to get somebody ready. So, but I, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll adapt and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, keep these other guys healthy. And when you're going into this week and you see that uh, a running back on the team you're playing has 17 touchdowns, that gets your attention. Is that the basis of everything they do? Is well, I've, I've worked with Coach Huff for, for a couple of years at Alabama the last couple of years. And, you know, he's a tremendous running back coach. And, you know, obviously they take a lot of pride in, you know, how they, they run the football. And just like it was at Alabama, they're going to have guys that come downhill and, uh, you know, try to, you know, try to be physical with you. So it's going to be another very physical football game. We, we know that. That's how they want to play. And, you know, we just have to make sure we, we, we tackle well. Um, you know, we're going to have to strike box and, uh, and get off and, um, you know, just be, be physical at the point of attack. Because if you're not, they're, you know, they're, these are big, big guys that, that run awfully hard. So I've been impressed with their, their running backs. You know, I know you said you didn't want to focus on those last 15 minutes, but kind of looking towards Marshall, how are you going to use those 15 minutes to maybe see much more better against an offense that's averaging 500 or total yards? Well, I could have made some better calls, certainly. Uh, you know, put our corners in better situations. Uh, I think that's what you're always, you know, thinking of. How could I, I help this guy in that situation? You know, we, we dropped eight guys a lot in that game uh, to try to help. But, you know, in that, that situation, uh, you know, we, we didn't. We, we rushed four and um, just put our corner in that last, you know, touchdown in a, you know, not a tough situation, but um, we didn't have as much help as, you know, maybe we, we could have, you know, helped those guys out in, in some, some other ways. And that's a, you know, that's a fundamental error, coaching error on, on our part. And, you know, it's something that we have to look at and get better because of it. Circling back to Caleb here, uh, Coach Taggart said he was out indefinitely. Is that rule? Is does that rule out him returning for the season, or is there a chance he comes back? Well, I'm not a doctor, so I don't I don't really know. Um, I think you know we we have to see how the next couple weeks play out, and you know if we're fortunate, I, I don't know how many was there three three weeks left. And then, you know, if there's a championship game, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I haven't really looked at all those scenarios. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's a chance. I don't know what the percentages are, but we'll see. You know, talking about Moss as well, he was practicing very limited last week, and then he did obviously play uh, this past Saturday. Have you seen him maybe get more of a production, more in practice this week to maybe set him up to play on this Saturday? Uh, no. You talked about the ad adaptive ability for this team. Um, every week, somebody else in the defense stands out. Uh, how does that play into your weekly preparations of knowing that you could use people in multiple places? Well, I think, you know, adaptability is a great thing to have in your defense. And, and certainly our, our players, we, we try to, you know, we try to morph into a couple different things, but, uh, it's you know getting them to understand with with limited repetitions is it gets hard sometimes, but we, we would like to have more in. Uh, but you run into you know there's practice times getting good at it, players getting confident in what they're doing, calling the right things where you have confidence in it. So those are all those are all things you have to weigh in throughout the course of a game. But uh, like you said, I, I think with this group of players, there's you know there's always somebody. Uh, that, you know, really steps up when we need them. It was Jordan one week, it's TJ one week, it's Zion one week, it's Smoke one week, it's it's Jalen, it's, you know, it's it was Caleb two weeks ago in, in Charlotte. So, you know, that's, you know, it says we got a lot of good players. Um, you know, that's, that's a system, you know, that's doing each guy's job. And when the play comes to you being ready to make it, and do your job is what we we try to preach, you know, to each guy, and uh, that's you know that's how we teach the defense. Anyone else?
little something different this morning. Um, you're used to playing Marshall and them having a certain look with the new head coach this year. I'm sure their offense is going to be different from what you guys have seen from them in the past. Can you talk a little bit about expectations for Marshall? Um, my expectations are just to execute our calls. I mean, they have a new uh, offensive coordinator, but I mean, they still have some of the same tendencies. So we just want to go back to what we know about those guys and be able to execute the calls that we put in. One of those tendencies always seems to be they they pride themselves on being a you know run first blue collar team. We're going to pound you into submission if we can. Uh, that hasn't changed in your mind? No, that hasn't changed at all. I mean. I mean they like to throw the ball as well, but yeah, they're gonna to try to come in and run the ball. You and Jordan have been one of the top safety duos in the country. How has it been working off of him and like what kind of like chemistry you all have together on the field that you guys have been doing so good together? Um, I feel like, well, we work with each other. So I mean, the chemistry just comes from uh, just being around each other for so long. I mean, we hang out off the field. So I guess the chemistry comes from that as well. You know, obviously looking at the, the defense last week against the against UTEP, the first three quarters, they had played really well and then that fourth quarter. I mean, how would you sort of evaluate the defense as a whole? Um, I mean, we have to finish the first three quarters. Don't mean nothing if you don't finish in the fourth. So if, if we finish the way we're supposed to finish, everything will go as planned. Nick, because the atmosphere of sort of post game was like, you know, again, a win is a win, but it wasn't really that celebratory one that you guys wanted. Do you kind of feel the same? About yes, sir. But yes, sir. That's just a mindset thing. So. When you don't win the way you're supposed to win, it always feels ugly. Right. In, your, in your time here, you know, in fighting to win the division championship, it always seems like you would, it comes down to FAU Marshall in, in some way, shape, or form. In some way, shape, or form, yes, sir. Do you, do you enjoy the rivalry? You may not like them, but you enjoy the rivalry. I embrace the rivalry. I love big games. I mean, I wish the game was on an even bigger stage. I love the rivalry. I enjoy these type of moments. I enjoy competing against the best. So, I mean, this is my type of tee right here. Chaz called it hate week in a, uh, a word. Is that what you would describe it as? As you, you just ready to get at it and uh, beat Marshall this week? Oh, definitely, definitely. Everybody knows what comes behind this game. We all know what we're getting into. So I mean, I hope everybody has the same mindset because we'll be ready to go. I mean, how much bigger is it that this game is is at home? You know, with all the fans that might show up. And... I mean, football still eleven on eleven, so. You don't really, that, that really doesn't have an effect on me. I mean, maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> right, and just looking at the film again, you know, the average 500 total yards a game, I mean, when you look at the, when you look at the team, what kind of, kind of pops out to you as being sort of one of the dangerous aspects of that team? Um, I mean, they, they're, they're very, uh, they're very stout up front. They have a lot of experience coming back up front. They have a lot of experience coming back on their offense all together. So, I mean, that's what stands out to me the most, like, it's the same players we played last year, so their their chemistry will be just as good as ours. I have to ask this question because Katrina asked it to the other three guys and forgot to ask you. I so like, it's military no. appreciation <laughs> week. You got uh, any family members in the military or anything like that that help you become where you are? I actually no, I have a lot of family in the military. Actually, like I have a couple family members who work with the federal government, and I actually have family members who are overseas fighting. So. Yeah, I have a lot of family members in the military. And then, like, having those family members in the military, how does that help you as a football player when it comes to, like, discipline or hard work and stuff like that? Well, well, what it does for me is really, like, why widens my spectrum of life, you know what I'm saying? It widens my spectrum of what could be done in the world to help others. It widens the spectrum of how to help others and the right way to do things and just discipline, like you say. So with all that being said, I mean, what do you want to see from, the deep, from you specifically and also the defense as a whole going into Saturday? Um, we really just want to clean up mistakes. And the goal is to play a perfect football game, which we know that's not as, as realistic as it is. But if you reach, try to reach that goal, you will always get the outcome you want. So for us defensively, it's getting off the field on third down, stopping the run early, and just getting our hands on balls and taking the ball out of the sky. Losing uh, Caleb. Uh, you know, an emotional and obviously playmaker. Um, is that something you guys can maybe rally around or does somebody have to fill that void in terms of, you know, he's the guy that's always firing everybody up. I mean, no, it's something definitely that we'll miss, but it's also something that we definitely could rally around. Um, I feel like I have to step up and be more of a vocal leader than I'm already in, which is not hard at all. So we'll be ready to rally around that real fast. Yeah, how would you kind of look at obviously smoke at a big game, you know, against, you know, he was so cool. 
pretty much besides getting that first pick that he finally wanted, he, he was all over the field. I mean, how, how is that important to the secondary uh, to have a guy like him on the team? Well, I mean, those are the expectations for Smoke. He was a starter for us last year, so it's not supposed to be any drop off. So I expect those things out of Smoke, just like I expect those things out of Zion or anybody else who comes out there and lines up with him. And then you guys have called him almost for a lot. The whole time he was there, he finally gets that first pick. What was that move in the locker room with uh, that? I already see you smiling. I got that word. <laughs> well, the the nickname is funny, but I've never called him that. But the nickname is funny. But I mean, just it just happy to see guys making plays. Like I'm that type of guy. I'm happy to see guys making plays, just doing things that they love to do. So I was excited that Ham caught a pick. Um, the carriers got his first sack or well, half a sack. So I was just happy that everybody was able to contribute to a win. I think Coach Taggart's the one that gave him that name. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> last year. Last yeah. year. Anybody else? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.